This is our second video on community detection in networks. We will talk about a quantity called modularity, which measures the quality of a given split. Then we will present the Louvain method, an approximation algorithm that tries to find a graph partition with a high modularity score. One of the enduring problems of community detection is there is not an official definition of what makes a community. Here is a definition from sociology. This emphasizes that actors in a community have many direct and frequent ties with others in their community. What's not clear from this definition is what this means about ties with people outside the community. So when we divide a network into two communities, we have to take into account two things. Number one, the structure within a community. We want a community to be internally coherent. And number two, the structure between communities. We don't want lots of coherence between two separate communities. If that were the case, we'd rather merge those communities into one. So perhaps we want to think about communities as maximally coherent subnetworks. For example, if we were to add a few edges to this network, we may choose to merge two communities into one, but it also might depend upon which edges we add, how many, and where they connect. So what is a community? Our general rule of thumb is that we want many edges within a community and few edges between communities. And note that this definition is both local and global. Here's a nice way to quantify this. We start with a network and partition into communities. We then look at the fraction of edges that run between the communities. Ideally, we'd like this to be low, but what does that mean? A good baseline would be to compare our network to a randomly rewired network. This means that we keep all the vertex degrees the same, but recreate the edges by randomly pairing up vertices. And a fun fact, this is known as the configuration model, which we will talk about in our unit on random network models. Here's the basic idea. We start with the network on the left, and let's say we split this into three communities, like so. The trickiest decision is vertex 5, but I've decided to keep it outside of that otherwise dense purple cluster. Next, what I'll do is erase the middle of every edge, leaving edge stubs at each vertex. Now I randomly pair up edge stubs until I get a new network. When I'm done, I get the network on the right. And now if I use the exact same partition from the left, you will see that there are many more edges going between vertices of different colors and fewer edges between the same color. Given this difference, our choice of communities seems to be a good one. Okay, now we do this random rewiring many, many times to validate our partition. If our partition does much better on the actual network compared to the average random network, then we have confidence that our choice of community structure is a good one. Finally, it is worth noting that during the process, we focus on maximizing edges within communities. As a consequence, this tends to minimize edges between communities. Here's the mathematics behind validating our partition into communities against a randomly rewired network. The quantity Q is called the modularity of the community partition. This formula for an undirected network appears in our textbook. The formula for directed networks is similar. And let's take some time to understand what each symbol means. And let's start with the symbols that we've seen before. A is the adjacency matrix, and I and J are vertices in the network. Now in this network, we will allow for multiple edges, which we will represent as weighted edges. For the adjacency matrix, if there are three edges between I and J, then AIJ would be equal to three. If there are seven edges between them, then AIJ would be equal to seven. You get the idea. All right, M is the total number of edges. So 2M is just the sum of the degrees in the network. Meanwhile, KI and KJ are just the degrees of the vertices I and J. And this brings us to our new symbols, CI and CJ. And of course, delta. So CI is the name of the community containing vertex I. This could be a color like orange, purple, or green, 
or it could be the actual set of vertices in the community. And this delta is the Kronecker delta function. So it returns one when the two inputs are the same and zero when they are different. So if both i and j are orange vertices, then this delta function returns one. And if i is orange and j is purple, then this function returns zero. Now the point of this function is that the sum and is non-zero only when i and j are in the same community. So in our sum, we're only looking at edges that are internal to the communities that we are validating. Okay, that was a lot of information, so don't feel bad if you want to rewatch this part of the video. Here is our modularity formula again. My goal on this slide is to get you to understand what this sum and actually means. But first, I want to rewrite this equation into a formula that I like a little bit better. So here, I am using a triple sum instead of using the Kronecker delta function. And in order to calculate modularity, I pick a community C, and then I pick a vertex I in that community, and then I pick another vertex J, and now I calculate this difference, AIJ minus KI times KJ over 2N. And here's the intuitive understanding of this sum and. AIJ is the number of edges connecting I and J, and I will compare the actual number of ij edges to the expected number of ij edges in the randomly rewired network. Now I want to warn you, the intuitive explanation that I'm about to give is slightly flawed, but in a really, really big network, it's approximately correct. And I think that this intuitive understanding is really helpful. So let's put vertex i over here along with its k sub i edge stubs. And let's put vertex j over here along with its edge stubs. And let's also put all the other edge stubs that exist in the network. And so over here, there's a total of uh, 2n edge stubs. So what's the probability that this first edge stub at vertex i gets matched up to one of the edge stubs at vertex j? Well, that's just k sub j over 2n. But that's also true for each of the other edge stubs at i, and there are k sub i of them. And so the expected number of edges from i to j is just k sub i times j sub i over 2n. So we've done it. Each sum and compares the actual number of edges between i and j with the expected number of such edges in a randomly rewired network. So how do we use modularity scores in practice? Naive arguments show that the modularity score is somewhere between negative one and one. A positive score means that our community partition has done better than average. A higher score corresponds to more pronounced community structure. In practice, Researchers treat scores above 0.3 as significant, and scores below that should be moderated with some skepticism. Scores near zero mean that your partition hasn't picked up any community structure. And so that's how we use modularity to validate whether a given partition does capture some community structure in the network. Next, we will talk about a very popular community detection algorithm called the Louvain method. This is an approximation algorithm that tries to maximize the modularity score and does well in practice. One nice feature of the Louvain method is that it decides how many communities to return as part of its process. Here's the basic flow of the Louvain algorithm. We start with our network and perform a modularity optimization process. This splits the network into four communities. Next, we aggregate the communities into single nodes. Internal edges become loops of weight two. For example, this dark blue node has a loop of weight four because there are two edges within the dark blue community up here. Meanwhile, external edges merge into a single edge of the proper weight. And for example, there are three edges between the red and light blue communities down here because those correspond to the three 
edges up here. Once we've created the aggregation network, we repeat the modularity optimization on the new network. And in this example, we split into two communities by merging the red and light blue and merging green and dark blue. When this process stops merging our meta community nodes, we stop the process and then return the corresponding split in the original graph. In this case, we can chase back through the process to find the split into these two communities. So here this green vertex corresponds to the green and blue vertex in the previous aggregated network. And when we go back up, it corresponds to those eight vertices. Meanwhile, the light blue corresponds to this vertex in the aggregated network. And finally, we get these eight vertices in the original graph. And so those are our two final communities. Here are the details of the Louvain method. Every node starts in its own community, and then we begin our modularity optimization phase. We choose a random order for the nodes. For each node i, we move i to the community of a neighbor j that leads to the biggest positive change in the modularity. If all those changes are negative, then i just stays in its current community. We cycle through the vertices until no vertex wants to move. And then this brings us to our community aggregation phase. I talked about this on the previous slide, so revisit that part of the video for a refresher. We repeat these two steps until no vertices move during the modularity optimization, and then we are done. We expand the communities back up to the original network and return the partition. Finally, I wanted to make a small comment about an option called resolution that you'll find when you use Gephi. When you bring up the modularity dialog, Gephi gives you the following advice. Make the resolution lower to get more communities, smaller ones, and higher to get fewer communities, bigger ones. When I use Gephi, I just use the default resolution to begin with, and I actually run community detection multiple times to see if I get stable results. There are a few things that can contribute to instability. Remember that the Louvain method is an approximation algorithm, so it has some randomness in it, and so your results can change from run to run. Finally, a serious underlying problem comes from the fact that modularity has a so-called resolution limit. I'll explain what that is on the next slide, but here I'll tell you how I deal with this in Gephi. So I run modularity multiple times, and if my results are relatively stable, then I stop and call good. If the results are unstable, meaning that lots of vertices are switching between communities, or even the number of communities changes, then I start playing with resolution until I get stable results. I tune to find the resolution closest to one that gives me those stable results, and then I call it good. So here's the problem with modularity. When we're calculating this value, we actually divide by twice the number of edges, and this will actually prevent us from finding small communities, in particular, communities that are of size square root of m or smaller. But there is a way to correct for this when needed. Here is the math behind resolution. I won't go into the details, but here's the idea. We can rewrite modularity so that it is actually saying something about random walks on the network. You can see the appearance of the transition matrix P and the stationary distribution pi. Recall that on an undirected network, this limiting distribution pi is proportional to the node degrees. And using this random walk interpretation, modularity measures the following quantities. Let's assume that I start in community C. This first quantity measures the probability that I'm still in C after one step. This second quantity measures the probability that I'm still in C after capital T steps, where T is some very large number. Changing resolution is basically a time dilation you shift the time scale t to something smaller or larger. And that's all I want to say about resolution. I just think it's really interesting that random walks appear in community detection, just as they did when we were talking about network centralities.